Grand Columbia Channel. I've been a busy boy on day 25 of the imprisonment or the lockdown. And I want you to check out a new website, grandcolumbia.live. Grandcolumbia.live. I've been wanting to do this project for a long time because there's been things all over the place. You know, you've got all these different, you know, Facebook and various, uh, the blog, you know, the writings, all those things are scattered in all these different locations. I've consolidated everything all in one website. So you can reach out to everything that we're doing, including merchandise, all from one website, grandcolumbia.live. Today's video, I'm going to cover some news topics down here. I think they're rather interesting. And then I'm going to talk about the safety net. Is there a safety net in Colombia? What are the poor doing? That's a question I've been asked for a long time. And so I'm going to answer that today. So let's get to it. So big news in Ecuador, Rafael Correa, former president of Ecuador, and he's been brought up on charges. Well, he was found guilty. He's going to spend eight years in prison if they can get him back from Belgium. Second news item, the border of Ecuador and Colombia. Big problem. You see this virus thing has been a catastrophe in Ecuador. Here you've seen the stories of the bodies in the streets in Guayaquil. Colombia has not had anywhere near the problem, so there's real concern on the border about people coming from Ecuador. Next item, there was a child that just died in Popayán, three years old. It's amazing how much people are talking about that, how upset they are. And some people said that, you know, they feel like they've been deceived. Now in Quindío, the state or the department that I'm living in, there's been 11 new cases as of yesterday in a total of 34 cases and one death. Now on the quarantine front, this quarantine was set to expire on the 13th. It's been extended for another 13 days. So on the 26th, the quarantine will be over. For clarification, rent is not suspended. People must continue to pay their rent. Now there are some provisions Number one, evictions are banned. They're suspended up to two months after the national emergency. Number two, freezing rental prices. Number three, suspension of default interest and penalty. And the last thing is extension of the validity of the contract. So in other words, if your lease runs out during this, extend it during the emergency. And the last thing is a bit of good news and it blends into the next topic. Here in Condillo, they have an unemployment insurance, not the national one. And they're taking that fund and they're putting it out to extend or to enhance the national unemployment insurance. Now let's get on to the safety net. First of all, what is there normally? First category is the elderly. You have no retirement funds or the retirement funds you have are very small, you can sign up on that. There's 1.7 million people in Colombia, elderly, that are signed up on that. Uh, the second category is, uh, they call it family in action, families in action. And this is for single mothers or families at risk. And there's 2.6 million people signed up on that program. And then the third category is youth in action. And there's about 105, 110,000 uh, teenagers on that. Much of this in, entails uh, cash payment. So that's what's normally there. Plus you have other things. There's like the Senna that I mentioned, the interview that we just did. Uh, that's an educational program. So once you're out of high school, you can go on and get vocational training or college training. There's also healthcare programs that you can sign up if you don't have enough money to buy health care that you can sign up and the government will cover the health care costs. Is there a safety net during this? Well, all of those things that I just mentioned, those categories, the elderly, the family at risk, the youth at risk, all of those receive special payments. And so for a two week period of time, there was, depending from 170 to 280,000 pesos, it's primarily for food, but the government also is providing food. People signed up on these programs come up to about 5 million, but the people considered in poverty in Colombia, about a fifth of Colombia, 
is about 10 million. And so for the other 5 million, the government is providing food packages. So they're bringing them into the barrios and you could, you know, they're just giving physical food away. To Another thing is the health care. The government looked at health care and said, we don't want this to collapse. Some of the hospitals here have a lot of debt. This is a competitive environment. And there's two or three at the top of the heap, but you've got the ones on the bottom and they can go bankrupt. They don't, you know, they're not too big to fail. You know, they have to find ways to be efficient. But they don't want the virus to push over some of these, push them over the top. And so they're injecting $1.6 billion into the healthcare fund. It's interesting the way they're doing it. One of the reasons, or the main reason that some of these are, these hospitals are struggling is because of debts that they carry on the books. And a lot of this debt, they just can't recover. It's going to take so long to recover. And that puts them in a financial situation where something like this comes along, it can push them off the cliff. And so this $1.6 billion is to cover these old, these past debts. Basically, you got a clean slate. You're in the boat with the best performing companies, but their obligation is to cover the costs and the employment costs to continue through this crisis. And that's, so the government has actually done quite a bit as much as they can with the, with the, very, very, very limited budget they have. And the last thing, so we've got national, we've got uh, things being done in the Candillo department. And the last thing is volunteer. Volunteerism is pretty strong here. And again, I'll refer to that interview sent out Tuesday, the last video. She mentioned a little bit in there. Uh, here in Candillo, people that are doing pretty well, middle class and up, feel an obligation to help out people at the lower end. If you want to be cynical, you can say, well, they don't want any kind of protest or uprising or anything upset their life. I think that's pretty cynical. I know many of these people, and basically they just have a really good heart. And so they're donating money. They're donating uh, time. They're gathering up food. They're delivering food above and beyond what the government's doing. The government being a national government, like everywhere, they can't get to everybody. So the local government and the local people and volunteers fill in those gaps just to make sure that everybody's taken care of. It's not an ideal situation. Everybody doesn't have necessarily all that they need. But there's a lot of people that actually care and they're doing their best. So that's what we have today. I'll see you at coffee time next week.